If you saw a patient who was incidentally found to have severe aortic atherosclerosis, as well as moderate coronary artery calcifications, would you start aspirin in them or would you just start a statin? This was an issue that came up for me about a month ago and I actually posed the same question to you guys. Uh, so I wrote, a 75 year old man with CKD4 and prostate cancer presents for surgical resection of a metastatic lesion found in his spine. Preoperative CT imaging shows severe atherosclerosis atherosclerotic disease in the aorta, and moderate coronary artery calcifications. No prior cardiac history, no lipid panel on file, and what do you start? And uh, the answers were aspirin and atorvastatin, atorvastatin alone, and other. And you can see that 37% of people picked both aspirin and atorvastatin, and 53% said atorvastatin alone. So which one is correct here? So here are some of the responses. So one person says, refer to PCP. And of course, uh, you know, that's always an option. But then what, say you're the PCP, then you're going to have to make this decision. And also as a hospitalist, I feel like there's a lot of things that we can start in the inpatient setting that will optimize the patient's care by the time they get to the PCP. This one says, I think one should calculate the RCRI for non-cardiac surgery and follow accordingly. For this answer, you know, the uh, revised cardiac risk index is used to calculate the uh, risk of a cardiac event uh, after surgery. And I don't believe there's any utility in using it to determine whether or not you should start aspirin or not. This person says uh, Lavalo 4 milligrams, which I looked up and it was pitavastatin, uh, so basically just a statin. Start both tomorrow if this patient is on the schedule for today. Depends on how soon the surgery is planned for. I would start statin and aspirin and hold aspirin in the perioperative period two to three days prior and resume when safe from a surgeon perspective. This person says, considering surgical interventions, especially involving the spine, we wouldn't want him, we wouldn't want him on aspirin due to increasing the risk of bleeding. And considering this patient hasn't already been on a blood thinner for prior cardiac history, starting the atorvastatin would probably be the most sensible approach. And this person says, I feel like this guy doesn't have a long life expectancy given his metastatic prostate cancer and CKD. Is it unreasonable to not start either? I think that's definitely a great point. Uh, you know, if somebody is probably you know not going to have a very long life expectancy, then the benefit of using Using aspirin and statin is really not that significant. Again, all of these are kind of on like 10 year time frames. So that's definitely a great point. But uh, prostate cancer in general uh, can be is fairly treatable. And I don't think it alone would be the reason you wouldn't start this patient on at least something for the severe atherosclerosis. So what exactly is the right answer? Part that I was struggling with is, you know, there's moderate coronary artery calcifications. You look at the CT, there's just like calcium all over. And can you consider that? that coronary artery disease? And if so, wouldn't you want to start aspirin for coronary artery disease? Well, there's two things. I reached out to a bunch of cardiologists and some of my friends who are interested in cardi cardiology. And basically, I got uh, several people kind of echoing the same sentiment that starting aspirin in this situation really does not have the best evidence or clear indication. And that starting just the statin alone is probably the most correct answer here. The reason is, number one, Coronary artery calcifications are not equivalent to um, CAD. You cannot say it's coronary artery disease, even though there's like some semblance of disease in the coronary arteries. The CAC or the coronary artery calcium score has only been validated for convincing patients to start a statin. It has not been validated for the benefit of starting aspirin. Secondly, even if the patient did have coronary artery disease, there's actually some evidence nowadays that shows that uh, starting aspirin may not be absolutely necessary for non-obstructive CAD. So if the patient's not having any symptoms from it, they've never had angina, they don't have a stent placed or some prior PCI uh, you know, intervention that they required, then starting the aspirin is not necessarily needed. The final piece of information uh, uh, that would argue against starting uh, aspirin in this person is that I'm reminded of uh, multiple trials which kind of got us away from prescribing aspirin for primary prophylaxis. So again, you've got primary prophylaxis, which is to try and prevent uh, a certain event from happening or a cardiac event from happening and secondary prophylaxis, which is after a stroke has happened or after an MI has happened, then you start the aspirin. So in the past, primary prophylaxis was all the rage. Somebody has hyperlipidemia, they have an elevated ASCVD risk score, start them on aspirin and atorvastatin. However, we've had multiple trials actually since then that have kind of 
taken us away from starting aspirin for primary prophylaxis. So here you can see my flashcard on this and that aspirin is not recommended for primary prophylaxis of cardiovascular disease in patients over what age? And that's greater than 70. And for most patients, this is because the risk of bleeding outweighs the cardiovascular benefits. So there were three major trials that were done all in 2018, but the ASPRI trial did not reduce death, dementia, or physical disability in seniors greater than 70, but it did increase the risk of major bleed. In the ARRIVE trial, there were some moderate cardiovascular benefits in men greater than 55 or women greater than 60, but these tended to be offset by the bleeding risk. So again, the benefit was not super clear. And then in the ASCENT trial, there was a 1% reduced uh, incidence of vascular events, but 0.9% increased major bleeding in patients with diabetes. So overall, should aspirin be used in the primary prevention of cardiovascular disease? And the answer is no. So according to, according to the 2019 ACA AHA primary prevention of ACVD guidelines, consider primary prophylaxis if they are 40 to 70 years old with elevated ACVD risk and no increased risk of bleeding. Avoid if age greater than 70 or any increased risk of bleeding. So three reasons why this patient, despite the severe atherosclerotic uh, disease in his aorta, and the moderate coronary artery calcifications, they, he should not be started on aspirin and should just be started on statin. And that is one, coronary artery calcium scoring has only been validated for the use of statins and not for aspirin. Two, non-obstructive coronary artery disease doesn't necessarily need aspirin anyways. And three, we don't really favor starting primary prophylaxis anymore, especially in patients over the age of 70. Small clinical questions like this come up all the time in medicine. And uh, sometimes it's surprising that, you know, something you think would be so simple is kind of more of a nuanced uh, discussion than you might have initially thought. Let me know in the comments down below uh, if you have any thoughts about this and what you would have started. Would you have started both aspirin and atorvastatin or just the atorvastatin? Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video and peace.